Yes. Okay, here we go. So, um, the schema, so you move from um, loosening this false self, bad behaviors, the, ver the vices, the things that you just seem to do, to beginning to do um, better things. So you get kind of illuminated as to this second possibility, uh, this uh, sort of second thought, and you begin to act differently. So you don't necessarily get rid of old ideas and thoughts, but you begin that the power and the energy that makes you behave a certain way begins to dissipate and a new energy begins to come up. So don't think that you're a terrible person because you still think some of the same things. Uh, thoughts are thoughts. You don't control thoughts. But you learn to uh, not let them control you. That's the difference. And so we begin to act. Uh, we have an energy for good behavior. We become more loving, more accepting, less fear-based life. Uh, and then we move into this, as we move into this deeper sort of unitive way, and there are saints that talk about this. They say purgation, letting go, illumination, starting to do better, and then unitive. Say, I want unitive. I want unitive. Well, don't focus on the union. That's the contemplative. That's not your job. That's God's job. Uh, you just do your methodology of, of how you get more still, let go of thoughts, focusing on them, let go of words. And if God wants you to be to have this contemplative moment, you'll have it uh, for what, and probably uh, so that you'll be a better person with others that day. Um, so we're beginning to move from the prayer of what we do. This is the way I was taught. Prayer is what I do. Prayer is what God does. I need to get out of the way. And that's, that's how we'll move. Prayer is what God does. And I started to, I, I thought about that. I says, wow, that's so much easier. I don't have to do prayer. See, all that kindling prayer is all what I do. I talk to God. I read my books. I, I, I try to have good meditative thoughts on Scripture, Lectio Divina. Uh, a lot of that <laughs> is, uh, is my action until you get to the last step, which is letting go. Um, but all of a sudden, I start thinking, I don't, it's not my job. I show up, and I have my method to uh, help me if I need to kind of stay in it, uh, keep me on the tracks, if you will. Uh, I use my method when I find my mind wandering or I find myself in the middle of a scenario. But otherwise, it's God does it. And I find that so liberating. Uh, God does all the heavy lifting in meditation. I don't. In deep meditation, I don't. So... Um, Contemplation becomes something we allow to be done to us. It's not something to achieve. So you say, I achieved the contemplative moment. Uh, I know, okay, that's, yet a good, okay. There's, I just try to tell them there's more. There's when you find out you're not achieving, that it's just a gift. Uh, so it's something you allow, it's, it's beyond this idea of God. I, can, I achieved oneness with God. So there's you, and then there's God, and the two of you are one, and that's what you're at. Yes, I said, that's, that's not quite it. Uh, I said, there's more. I said, there's more. There's when you're not even aware of that. It's so deep. But it's what will change your life. So um, you can look at uh, Christianity. Well, but I, I know Christianity, mystical Christianity, I said of that was the unmediated experience of the divine. Very Kierkegaard, if you will. Uh, mystical Christianity, the inner emptiness. I let go of all my thoughts, my agenda for the day, what I want God to do, what I want you to do, and so on and so forth. I begin to not focus on that stuff. And that's what my method helps me to do. So I create, if you would, a space. You call it an inner emptiness, a space where you can offer God hospitality. Isn't that a wonderful thing? I say, I'm offering you hospitality, God. Come into my hotel. I have a room for you. Uh, something like that. Uh, it makes you think you're being nice to God. You're doing something. God's always within us, but it's just a nice thought sometimes to help us to say, why am I doing this? Oh, God is wandering around the universe and would like to just have some space within you. Eh, sometimes that helps. 
So contemplation is not about what's in it for me. That's so much of what uh, uh, vocal, active prayer is like, mental prayer is, is what I want to get. What's in it for me? And that's why a lot of people do start getting involved in this stuff, is what's in it for me? Um, well, I, I suggest, why don't you gaze at the cross? That may be in it for you. That'll get a lot of people out of it. Uh, so, um, and another thing you stop asking yourself, is this prayer working? Is this prayer working? Um, well, I would say if your idea of the prayer working is you feel good all the time and it doesn't matter what everybody else feels, then it's not working. Uh, but if you say, I, I do this prayer and I, I don't know, I just sometimes I'm, my mind's distracted, I think of other things, oh, maybe there's a moment or two when I do feel quiet and still, but it seems to pass, I don't know about this. And then I say to them, how is your relationships with the people around you going? Oh, they're going better. My, my world's going better. Oh, the prayer's working. Because you are beginning to act out the fruits of the prayer. You are just not aware of it uh, in the prayer itself. But you're aware of it in the way you are with others. I've heard people say, well, I, 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 uh, I go to meetings in, in, in recovery programs. And, uh, you know, I don't know if I get anything out of these meetings. And I said, did you drink today? <laughs> no. Well, then you got something out of it. Because that's what you did on a daily basis, that bad behavior. Now you don't do it. So, but you, you were bored at the meeting. You didn't want to go, uh, blah, blah, blah. I says, but you're not drinking. I said, that's the bottom line. So this is, uh, this is about my change in relationship to the world around me, which will include, at some point, a, a, a better sense of myself. But you won't always have a better sense of yourself sitting there alone uh, in your practice. Um, but if you're having a positive effect on people around you, or you feel more connected, even if that's more positive, that's positive, you feel more connected to people even though they're not changing, they don't bother you anymore like they used to. I, I, it's okay. Um, I see, and I was talking to someone a little bit earlier during the break, I see that there's just this attitude towards me as an older priest in my own community that, that, that I'm older, I'm beyond, I'm not going to be asked to do certain things. And a lot of it has to do with age, I think. And I said, it used to bother me. I said, I don't care because it frees me up to do what I want to do. And that means follow what God is asking me to do. So, uh, I mean... I'm a Paulist priest, and people say, what do you do? And I say, well, I teach about meditation and contemplation. That usually ends the conversation. Because <laughs> <laughs> are you converting someone to Catholicism? Are you getting more people to go to church or, uh, or so on and so forth? I mean, I bury the dead. I do funerals, and you know, I do the other stuff. But um, I don't focus that. I says, well, I, you know, then what do you do at the monastery? Oh, I... Pray, I read, I prepare talks, I do a little couple of other things. Oh, they just can't get a handle on it because they're, <laughs> they're all into accomplishing tasks. I said, yeah, I did all that. I was pastored and so on and so forth. So the heresy is that contemplative goal is to generate a private spiritual buzz. That's the heresy. Uh, be rid of all personal unhappiness. That's what I want to be rid of all personal unhappiness. That's not being of service to the world. You don't see that's all within me. It's all about me. Um, so I think keep those things in mind. So when we sit now, uh, we can keep in mind that God's going to do the work. There's no goal uh, in terms of my personal feelings. It's just to uh, have a nice space for God to rest in and love on you. That, that's all God wants to just love on you. And stuff will come from that. Will you have a wonderful 20 minutes? I have no idea. Because there could be all kinds of sounds outside and so on and so forth. Well, that's what my method helps me to do. I, don't, I notice the, the whistles, uh, the, the uh, uh, fire alarm sounds. Uh, and when I find myself wondering if a church is burning down, uh, then I start thinking about Notre Dame uh, in, in uh, Paris 
Then I call upon, I just notice my breathing because I just want to separate myself from that scenario of thinking that started with the fire alarm. But if I hear the fire alarm, but it, it doesn't make me think about anything, it's just background, just background, that's all. So you're not get, emptying the mind. You're just not paying attention to it. So uh, you're making space for God. So let me just turn this off. Oh. Let me see. Oh, you got to stop. 